Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, your go-to source for staying informed about HIV. It's great to be back. Today we're doing a deep dive into the latest HIV cure research, mm. which I know can feel like a roller coaster of emotions, hope, skepticism, confusion. It's a lot to unpack. It really is, especially with so much information and sometimes misinformation out there. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. You know, when I first heard about a potential HIV cure, it almost sounded too good to be true. I understand that feeling. So before we dive into the latest breakthroughs, can we take a step back and just remind everyone why an HIV cure has been so elusive for so long? I mean, we have medications that can manage the virus, but a true cure is a whole other ballgame, right? Absolutely. The main challenge lies in the nature of HIV itself. It's a retrovirus, which means it integrates its genetic material into the DNA of the cells it infects. Oh, wait, that sounds pretty complex. It is. Imagine it this way. HIV is like a thief breaking into the control center of your cells and rewriting the blueprints to include its own instructions. These infected cells become viral factories, churning out more copies of the virus. So even if you're on medication and the virus is suppressed, these hidden blueprints are still there. Exactly. These infected cells can lie dormant for years, forming what we call latent reservoirs, and they're incredibly stealthy hiding from both the immune system and antiretroviral medications. Wow, so it's like HIV is playing hide and seek inside our bodies. That's a good analogy. And because these latent reservoirs are so difficult to detect and target, they pose the biggest hurdle to achieving a cure. Even if we can suppress viral replication with medication, those hidden reservoirs can reactivate at any time, reigniting the infection. I see. So the key to a cure is to find a way to either eliminate these latent reservoirs completely or permanently silence them, right? You got it. And that's what researchers are working so hard to achieve. Now, amidst all this complexity, there's been some incredible news recently. Back in July 2024 at the International AIDS Conference in Munich, scientists announced a seventh case of long-term HIV remission. Yes, and that news sent ripples of excitement through the scientific community. Okay, so remission, not necessarily cure, but still, mm -hmm. this is huge, right? Can you walk us through what happened? Certainly. This individual referred to as the Dusseldorf patient achieved remission after undergoing a stem cell transplant to treat acute myeloid leukemia, a type of blood cancer. The donor, it turns out, had a rare genetic mutation that makes their cells resistant to HIV infection. It's a mutation in a gene called CCR5, which acts as a doorway for HIV to enter cells. So essentially, this individual received a brand new immune system that's impervious to HIV. That's the gist of it. Now, it's important to note that stem cell transplants are a very complex and risky procedure, not a viable option for everyone living with HIV. I understand. It's not like we can just go around giving everyone new immune systems. Right, exactly. But what this case does show us is that a cure is scientifically possible, which is incredibly encouraging. It gives us hope for the future. Nah. So while stem cell transplantation might not be the answer for everyone, what are some other strategies scientists are exploring to tackle these pesky latent reservoirs? One approach that's been getting a lot of attention is the shock and kill strategy. It's a two-pronged approach. First, you try to shock the latent HIV out of hiding, forcing it to become active again. Then you kill the reactivated virus with antiretroviral medication or by boosting the body's immune response. So it's like flushing the virus out of its hiding spots and then ambushing it. That's a good way to put it. The challenge, however, lies in finding agents that can effectively reactivate latent HIV without causing harmful side effects to the patient. I can imagine. And what about gene therapy? I keep hearing about that as a potential game changer. Is that being explored in the context of an HIV cure as well? Absolutely. Scientists are looking at ways to use gene editing techniques like CRISPR-Cas9 to either disable the CCR5 gene, preventing HIV from entering cells, or to even cut the HIV DNA out of infected cells completely. Wow, that's some serious molecular surgery. It is cutting-edge science, but it's still very early days for this technology. There are many hurdles to overcome in terms of safety, efficacy, and delivery before it could be widely applied. Okay, so lots of potential but still some way to go. Precisely. So those are some of the more direct approaches to tackling the latent reservoirs. Are there other strategies that are more about boosting the body's own immune defenses against HIV? Kind of like giving the immune system a much needed upgrade. You're thinking about immune modulation, and yes, that's another exciting avenue of research. One approach involves therapeutic vaccines, which aim to either prevent HIV infection in the first place or to boost the immune response in people already living with HIV, helping them control the virus more effectively. So instead of trying to eliminate the virus completely, it's about helping the body keep it in check. 
Exactly. And another area of immune modulation involves broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs for short. These are powerful antibodies that can target and neutralize a wide range of HIV strains. Interesting. So they're like super antibodies. In a way, yes. The challenge with BNABs is that they're difficult to develop and often have a short lifespan in the body. But researchers are making progress in engineering more potent and long-lasting BNABs that could potentially be used as a long-term treatment or even as part of a cure strategy. It's amazing to think that we're potentially on the verge of having so many different tools in our arsenal to fight HIV. It's a really exciting time to be in this field. The pace of research is accelerating and we're constantly learning more about the virus and how to target it. Now, even though a cure isn't readily available yet, there have been incredible advancements in managing HIV. Of course, we can't forget about antiretroviral therapy or ART. Right, ART has truly been a game changer, allowing people living with HIV to live long, healthy lives. Absolutely. Art works by suppressing viral replication, preventing the virus from damaging the immune system and progressing to AIDS. When taken consistently and correctly, art can reduce the amount of virus in the blood to undetectable levels. That's incredible. So undetectable basically means untransmittable. Exactly. Undetectable equals untransmittable, or UU, is a major breakthrough in HIV prevention. When someone living with HIV achieves and maintains an undetectable viral load through art, they cannot sexually transmit the virus to their partners. This is such important information for people to know. Mm. It really changes the conversation around HIV. It does. It highlights the importance of regular HIV testing and early initiation of art. The sooner someone knows their status and starts treatment, the better their health outcomes will be and the less likely they are to transmit the virus. And speaking of testing, we've seen some incredible advancements in HIV testing technologies over the years. That's true. Rapid tests can now provide results in as little as 20 minutes, and there are even at-home testing kits available, making testing more accessible and convenient than ever before. It's so important to break down those barriers to testing. I agree. Knowing your status is the first step to taking control of your health, whether you're living with HIV or not. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. From the complexity of HIV to the groundbreaking research that's paving the way towards a cure. But it's not all sunshine and roses, right? There are still challenges we need to address. That's true. HIV is a constantly evolving virus, which makes developing a cure and even a vaccine extremely difficult. And on top of the scientific hurdles, there are also social and economic barriers that can prevent people from getting tested, accessing treatment, and adhering to their medication. So what can we as individuals and as a society do to tackle these challenges? Well, first and foremost, we need to continue supporting HIV research and funding for public health initiatives. That's a given. But beyond that, what else? We need to address the stigma and discrimination that still surround HIV. This means creating supportive environments where people feel comfortable getting tested, disclosing their status, and seeking treatment without fear of judgment. It's about fostering compassion and understanding right. Exactly. We also need to advocate for policies that ensure equitable access to healthcare and education, particularly for marginalized communities that are disproportionately affected by HIV. These are all important points. It's a reminder that the fight against HIV is not just about science, it's also about social justice and human rights. Absolutely. And it's a fight that requires the collective effort of researchers, healthcare providers, policymakers, activists, and communities working together towards a common goal. It's about breaking down silos and recognizing that we're all in this together. Exactly. We're all part of the solution. I think that's a great place to pause for now. We've covered a lot of ground in this first part of our deep dive into HIV cure research. It's been a very insightful conversation. When we come back, we'll delve into some of the ethical considerations surrounding HIV cure research and discuss what the future might hold for this field. Sounds fascinating. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after a short break. You know, as we explore these potential cures, it's critical to remember that HIV research isn't just about scientific breakthroughs. That's a good point. What else should we be considering? The ethical implications are huge. We need to think about access, affordability, and potential risks, especially for new and experimental treatments. That makes sense. Not everyone has equal access to healthcare, and we don't want to create a situation where a cure is only available to a select few. Exactly. And then there are questions around informed consent. Participants in clinical trials need to fully understand the potential benefits and risks involved, and they need to be able to make autonomous decisions without feeling pressured. 
So it's about ensuring that research is conducted ethically and responsibly with the well-being of participants at the forefront. Precisely. It's a delicate balance between pushing the boundaries of science and safeguarding the rights and dignity of individuals. And I imagine there are also societal implications to consider. If a cure does become available, how do we ensure that it's distributed fairly and that we don't inadvertently reinforce existing health disparities? Those are crucial questions, and they require a multifaceted approach involving policymakers, healthcare providers, and community advocates working together to create equitable systems. It's a reminder that scientific progress needs to go hand in hand with social progress. Absolutely. We need to address the underlying social determinants of health, such as poverty, stigma, and discrimination that can create barriers to accessing care and prevention services. It's about creating a world where everyone has an equal opportunity to live a healthy and fulfilling life, regardless of their HIV status. I couldn't agree more. We need to move beyond simply preening the virus and focus on creating a society that supports the well-being of all its members. Well said. Now, shifting gears a bit, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what the future holds for HIV research. What are some of the most exciting developments on the horizon? Oh, there's so much to be excited about. One area that's particularly promising is the development of long-acting injectables and implants that can deliver antiretroviral medications over an extended period of time. So instead of taking daily pills, someone could potentially get an injection once a month or even less frequently. Exactly. This could be a game changer for adherence, making it easier for people to stay on their medication and maintain viral suppression. That would be incredible. Yeah. And what about on the prevention front? Are there any new tools in the pipeline that could help prevent HIV transmission in the first place? There are several. One exciting development is the progress being made with pre-exposure prophylaxis, or pre-AAP, which is a daily medication that can significantly reduce the risk of HIV infection. So it's kind of like birth control for HIV. That's a good analogy. Yeah. And in addition to daily oral pre-PP, there are also long-acting injectable formulations of pre-P being developed, which could offer even greater convenience and protection. That's fantastic. And what about a vaccine? Is that still a distant dream, or are we getting closer to developing an effective HIV vaccine? It's definitely still a challenge, but there's been some encouraging progress recently. New vaccine candidates are being tested in clinical trials, and researchers are using innovative approaches like mRNA technology, which has proven successful with other vaccines. So there's still hope for an HIV vaccine someday. Absolutely. It's a complex virus, but I'm optimistic that with continued research and collaboration, we'll eventually find a way to develop a safe and effective vaccine. That would be a monumental achievement. Now, as we wrap up our conversation today, I wanted to circle back to something we touched on earlier, the importance of community engagement in the fight against HIV. It's crucial. Communities play a vital role in everything from raising awareness and reducing stigma to advocating for research funding and ensuring equitable access to care. And it's not just about the HIV community itself, right? It's about everyone coming together to support those affected by HIV and working towards a world free from this virus. You're absolutely right. It's a collective effort and we all have a role to play. So if someone listening wants to get involved, what are some ways they can contribute? There are so many ways to make a difference. You can volunteer at a local AIDS service organization, donate to organizations supporting HIV research and advocacy, educate yourself and others about HIV, or simply reach out to someone living with HIV and offer your support. Every action, big or small, can have a ripple effect. Exactly. We need to foster a sense of shared responsibility and compassion and remember that this is a fight we can win together. Those are powerful words. And speaking of winning together, I think it's time for us to move on to our final segment where we'll reflect on what we've learned today and offer some parting thoughts for our listeners. Sounds good. You know, it's incredible to think about how much progress has been made in HIV research and treatment since the early days of the epidemic. It really is. It's a... Uh a testament to the dedication and ingenuity of scientists, healthcare providers, and activists who have just refused to give up hope. Yeah, and to the resilience and courage of people living with HIV who have fought for their rights and their lives. Absolutely. Their voices and their stories have been so instrumental in shaping the response to the epidemic. Absolutely. And they continue to inspire us to push forward towards a future free from HIV. You know, reflecting on everything we've discussed today, it's clear that we are at a really pivotal moment in the fight against HIV. Definitely. We have powerful tools to manage the virus and prevent transmission, and we're making significant strides towards a cure. Yeah. But, but we can't afford to become complacent. The challenges ahead are still formidable, and we need to maintain our commitment to research advocacy and community engagement. What's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from this deep dive? 
I'd say it's this HIV is not a death sentence. With access to treatment and care, people living with HIV can live long, healthy, and fulfilling lives. And together, we can create a world where HIV is no longer a threat. That's a beautiful message of hope and empowerment. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. It's been an incredibly insightful and inspiring conversation. It's been a pleasure. I always appreciate the opportunity to talk about this important topic. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of HIV cure research. We hope you found it informative and engaging. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about HIV, the better equipped we'll be to protect ourselves, support our loved ones, and advocate for a future free from this virus. If you'd like to learn more or get involved in the fight against HIV, we encourage you to visit the resources section on our website. And be sure to subscribe to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast for more in-depth discussions on all things HIV. Until next time, stay safe. Stay informed and stay hopeful. Goodbye, everyone.